Hey everybody, this is Midnight Update. I'm Seamus Byrne. Welcome to Wednesday, 11th of March. Today, Big Pond announced their plans to roll out 100 megabit cable broadband across their network. Starting with Melbourne, availability is expected near the end of the year. Isn't it funny how this comes hot on the heels of Internode's recent announcement of 100 megabit fibre to the home? Similar things happened with ADSL2 upgrades, if I recall correctly. Now I'm all for warp speed broadband, but the trouble with Big Pond is low bandwidth caps and counting uploads in usage metering. With 100 megabit speeds, an average Telstra cap could be swallowed in less than a minute. Fingers crossed, this actually is gonna be the start of something wonderful. Spent a little time recently playing with the new Dell Mini 9, and this is specifically uh, a model that I've been sent to test out with the new Vodafone plan, where you can pick it up for $59.95 a month over a two year contract, and that gets you five gigs of wireless data on the Vodafone network, and they basically throw in the Dell Mini 9 for free. Now, this device is actually a real bargain. If you're the kind of person who is hitting the train every day on a long commute, or in particular, if you're a student, um, particularly at uni, where you just wanna be able to research anywhere, anytime, you might want, some people are gonna want a heavier laptop for you know, heavier duty work. But if you're just writing essays and doing research, uh, then I think something like this is just perfect for the quick slip in your bag, get it out mid lecture, you're never gonna have trouble fitting this on a lecture theater desk. Uh, I think it's a really great device and a really nice piece of hardware. It's actually quite light, uh, it's quite slim. I mean, it's not the lightest of the netbooks, I don't think, but it's a really nice uh, piece of engineering from Dell. Um, the keyboard's not too bad. I've got big hands and it's not too bad. I think if I had to use it every day, I'd probably get annoyed, um, but it's comfortable enough for just doing it a little bit here and there. Um, the audio is actually not too bad out of it either. Um, and yeah, in general, you know, I rate the hardware quite highly. The biggest problem with this, and I think most people would admit it, um, is that Windows XP just isn't really the best system for this job. I mean, Vista certainly isn't gonna be good either. Um, but hopefully when Windows 7 hits, these kinds of devices are gonna run a lot smoother and a lot more efficiently. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, when these netbooks first came out, I think the, the Linux options that were available on the EPC was great. And I just feel like a more purpose-built system would be really perfect. If you take some power tools to this and really tweak the hell out of the back end, um, remove a lot of the crap that's going on, you can see there's like a thousand and one things here in the taskbar. Um, yeah, I think if you remove a lot of the crud this this thing might run even better than it does. Yeah, right now it's ideal for research, writing, that kind of thing. Um, surfing the web, obviously. Um, so yeah, I think in general, a great deal. Really hope to see more of it. The fact that these things can now be just stuck on a plan, get you a lot of data access, perfect, perfect road machine. Um, and so I definitely say that if you are hitting the commute, hitting the lecture theatres, this is a great deal and a definite buy if you're thinking about it. Been playing with another cool product recently. It's the Logitech 1100i. This has just launched. It's the top of the range universal remote. Comes in at about $900. Now it is a beautiful device. Let's not mistake that. As a piece of hardware, it's a lot smaller than I first thought. I'd seen their previous uh, thousand model, only in pictures. And likewise, this 1100, I'd seen the photos, but it's only once I saw it in hand that I realized it's actually quite quite small, trim, slim, elegant. Um, but, there's always a big but, of course, $900. Uh, you would want to have a very serious home theater set up in place to make this worth your while. This thing can control over 200,000 different devices, not all at once. Yeah. Um, but it has that many things available within the programmable system. Uh, to make it very quick and easy to set up. Now, there's a lot of faffing about when you're setting it up. Um, it's all set up through a desktop client uh, and it does make it easy. It holds your hand a lot of the way, even if you're having trouble with some devices. Um, it, it does its best to, to help you get through that and make sure it works out a way that it can control those devices. Um, but that said, um, 
it ultimately comes back down to how many things you actually need it to do. If you have a home theater setup where you're like controlling lights and curtains um, and umpteen other things and maybe multiple room things going on and all that, then maybe you're the kind of person who wants a $900 universal remote that looks beautiful when a friend comes over and you say, hey, yeah, let's just, uh, let's just put on a movie. Um, that's cool. But if you're the kind of person who like 99.9% .9 of people um, just wants something to get rid of the clutter of remotes and make a few functions easier to just sit down and get down to business and enjoy what you're, uh, what you're trying to do, um, then I'd skip this and I'd be going for either the Harmony One, which is still a few hundred dollars, um, or even the, um, the Harmony 510 or 550, which are both uh, more around that sort of $200 range. Uh, I think it'd be well worth it for a lot of people to spend that kind of money um, on getting a universal remote because it really does make life a lot easier. Um, but I'm going to say I've enjoyed playing with this. Um, it does a nice job of controlling what I need. Um, but at $900, I won't be buying it anytime soon. I just had the iBorg project pointed out to me and it has to be one of the most incredible prosthetic hacks you're ever going to see. A filmmaker who has lost an eye wanted to get a camera embedded in the prosthetic. Awesomeness follows. There's a great video of his recent two week trial up on the site, plus the team is blogging all the latest developments. Check it all out at www.iborgproject.com. And that's all for tonight's update. Thanks for stopping by. Join us weeknights around midnight Sydney time for Daily Geek News. And for more coverage, visit midnightupdate.com.